Hello everyone, uh, this is Shiny here, and I'm in the cockpit of my Tomcat. And I want to give you a few tips today about aerial refueling. And the, well, the primary tip that I want to talk about today is your point of view or your perspective you use when refueling. Um, so when I learned to refuel in the Tomcat and for a long time afterwards, I always looked straight through the front windscreen and I was usually looking up. So I had to <clears throat> lean forward, lower myself down and looking up at that pod and approaching the basket. Recently, well, not too recently, but a while back, I changed my perspective. I, I started doing it a different way. Uh, Reflected Simulations made a video where he was giving tips on refueling the Tomcat back before the Speed and Angels came out. And he mentioned zooming your view out. Um, I don't remember if he mentioned raising your perspective, but when he showed his refueling and he was zoomed out more, I also noticed that his point of view was higher. So in my case, I don't like to be zoomed out. I don't like a, a kind of strangely zoomed out view. I like to keep my zoom fairly close, but I usually do raise the seat in the Tomcat so that when I'm normally flying, I see just a bit of the nose out front. Now then when I'm refueling, since I'm already setting up just slightly higher, I just, in my seat, I stretch myself up. Now, this is an important point. Um, I'm using track IR. So these, this tip is mainly for people using track IR and 2D screen. If you're using VR, you're already ahead of the game and this won't be as important for you because you can feel your plane a lot more. I think in VR, you know, it's gonna be a little more natural. But if you have track IR, track IR, if you're on a 2D screen, by raising yourself up in your seat when you're tanking, and instead of looking at the pod through your front windscreen, rather look at the pod over the canopy rail like that. Look at it over the canopy rail and approach from a little bit below. If you do that, I think you will feel the plane more. You will feel the relative motion. You will just have a better feeling for, it'll just feel more natural. It's got, <laughs> I'm having trouble to explain it, but it'll feel more natural. Um, you won't have to think about it as much. And another thing is, as we all know, from every tanking tip about any plane, don't look at the basket. Don't look at the basket. That's important. Um, looking at the basket causes you to start oscillating and overreacting. So we don't do that. And when you're using this perspective, because it puts your probe a little further down into the corner of the screen, you're even less likely to be tempted to look at the basket. Your focus on the probe and the basket will slip down there. So that's my, my main tip for today is if you're having trouble or if you, you struggle, one thing you might try is just raising your perspective a little bit so that you're looking at the pod and you're approaching the tanker, looking over your canopy rail instead of looking through the front windscreen like this. So I, I think that really helped me just to hook up faster and, and more comfortably even though I could do it before, but it made it more comfortable. So that's my number one suggestion right there.
that, a couple other quick suggestions uh, I would give is with your throttle movement. So you've probably heard this a lot of times too. The throttle is always moving, right? Your, your throttle, you're not leaving the throttle in the same position. You're always moving. You're always slightly adjusting it. But the adjustments are very, very small. So just like with your stick controls, you have to get, to get good at refueling, you have to get good at making tiny corrections. You know, I mean, your, your throttle is moving a very small amount, you know, and with a stick too, when you're making corrections, you know, I, I sometimes say you're not really moving the stick. You're just thinking about moving the stick. <laughs> that thinking about moving the stick will translate into some very micro tiny movements and that's enough. And with the throttle too, you're, you're just slightly moving the throttle. You know, you don't want, uh, you don't want big movements. You don't want, you know, it's just like with the stick movement, it's going to cause oscillations. You know, if you feel like you're falling back and you really put on a lot of throttle, I mean, yeah, you're going to move up, but you're going to move up. You're going to start getting lift and gaining altitude. You're going to either hit the tanker or disconnect going high. So anything, all the movements, throttle and stick have to be so tiny. But I think uh, really mastering the minor throttle movements is really key to getting good at refueling because that's also with your approach to the tanker. You can't approach too fast. You know, you have to approach slowly and smoothly so you can slide in and that's really controlling the throttle movements uh, but you know that's just like flying formation in any case like you've heard that a lot in videos too before you really practice tanking just practice flying formation because flying formation is the same thing you're just you know watching that other plane and letting your hands do what they should do on the throttle and stick to keep you in that position and you got to get good at making smaller and smaller um, corrections. The next tip I have for you is about trim. So we know how important trim is when refueling, especially in an aircraft like the Tomcat that doesn't have fly-by wire. However, besides trimming uh, for pitch especially, don't forget to trim your rudders. So what I mean is when you open the fuel probe on the right side of the nose, that's going to create some yaw to that side, right? So your refueling will be a lot easier if you add in some left rudder trim to compensate for that yaw produced by the fuel probe. Um, it'll just make it a lot easier on you. And you might not even think about that or you might forget about it, um, but don't forget to trim your rudder to compensate for the fuel probe. So a little bit of left trim to center that ball again. Okay, here's another tip for you. Um, as far as the F-14's wings go, so if you notice here, my wings are in auto, right? My wings are open. Uh, my wings are fully out. Um, if you want to put your wings back a little bit when you refuel, especially in the beginning, that's absolutely fine. Um, You'll hear a lot of times, you know, and see a lot of people putting the wings in bomb mode. And yeah, you can do that. Um, you don't have to put it all the way in bomb mode. If you want to just use, you know, um, 35 or 40 degrees of wing sweep to help you out, you can do that. So what that's going to do is just you're, 
you're going to get a little less lift off the wings. I think you're going to have more stability. You're, you're going to have slightly less chance of your plane wanting to, um, to bobble up and down. Especially when you're learning and you, you don't have those very tiny stick corrections down. Um, however, uh, I suggest even if you do that a little in the beginning, um, you know, don't make it a long time habit. Um, you know, most top cap pilots usually are going to be refueling with the wings in auto. Um, sometimes, some situations you might need more stability, maybe if it's a really windy day or something or like that. But generally, don't make it a crutch. Don't make it a thing you think you have to do. Um, you know, use it as a tool when you're learning and trying to get better in the beginning. But you know, get out of the habit when you can. Um, ah, it's just, you know, it looks better with the wings out. So, you know, why do we do most things that we do? We do them because they look good, right? So it looks better with the wings out. So get out of the habit when you can. Don't make it a crutch. Um, it's no big deal. If Once you can refuel, you can refuel with the wings in auto. You won't feel any difference after a few tries. Um, let's see, what else should we mention? I think um, with the F-14, <clears throat> excuse me, with the F-14A versus the F-14B. So obviously the in the two aircraft that we have in DCS, because we don't have much other updated things in the B as far as uh, we don't have a different HUD or anything like that, uh, although that would be nice in the future. But right now we don't have it, so... Um, the only main difference is the engines, right? So that's going to come into play when you refuel because when you're in the A with the TF-30s, the response time is going to be slower, right? That engine is going to take a little longer to respond. Not too much, but it is a little bit. So um, you'll probably notice that you have more of a chance of falling back out of the basket in the A so you're going to have to be aware of that and you're going to have to stay on top of the power and make sure you're probably giving it a little more to to stay up there and you're going to have to respond a little quicker yourself because your engines are going to take a little bit longer to um, give you that response and with alternatively with the b um you're going to have to be very gentle with the throttle more so than the A because the B is going to, the engines are going to respond faster. And if you make too much of a correction, you know, you're going to be up there on top of the tanker really quick, you know? So the good thing with the B is if you start to fall back, you can correct that quicker, but you have a higher chance to over correct. Um, now, uh, though, you know, if you're refueling off the S3 Viking, both of those situations are going to be even more important because that hose is short. So, you know, if like if you're in the A, it's going to be even easier to fall out of the basket and you're going to really have to stay on top of it. Um, if you're on the B, you're going to easily be on top of that S3 and with your nose up his butt very quickly. So, you know, just remember which plane you're flying and uh, the difference in the engine response time because that's going to, that's going to, play a key importance there okay i think that's all guys i, I wanted to talk about the perspective mainly I, I mentioned the throttle movement and the stick movement um i mentioned the wings and mentioned the engine difference between the a and the b and i i think that covers about all the bases for now so uh, on that note i will uh, talk to you guys later happy flying have a good one bye bye